Hello and <laughs> welcome. Um, my name is Freya. I'm a knitter and textile student living in Glasgow with my girlfriend Karina and my two cats, Kiska and Pointy. Welcome or welcome back if you've been here before. Um, thank you for coming back. Um, so I hope you have been doing well. I have been doing okay. Um, the usual up and downs, um, but I've seen some exciting things happen, some not so exciting things happen, but I'm here to record um, some of the things that I have knitted. I have a feeling this might be one of my shortest <laughs> videos. I feel like I say that every time, but um, because the thing that I've been working on the most has taken so long, I've not really done anything else, but anyway. I'm sure I'll have a lot to say. So I guess we'll just jump in to my main and biggest finish object, which is what I am wearing. It is the chestnut sweater by Petite Knits and I will get the yarn that I use. Um, I showed this in the last one as a whip and I'm sure I only got to here um, and I'd only just joined in the round, so the yarn that I used was Drops Flora, which is a four ply or fingering weight yarn, and it is 65% wool, 35% alpaca. It, that is the white fog colorway. And then I held it together with a Drops Kid Silk in. Um, so I knit the size small, which was the second size, um, and I, I got so close <laughs> to getting gauge, but I didn't. I had to go up half a needle size, um, so the pattern suggests a 4mm, I used a 4.5, and I'm sure I was like half a stitch too many in four inches. I still stuck with the second size because it only made a tiny bit of difference but my row gauge was quite significantly different. I think it was two stitches more. So when I knit down, let me show you what it looks like. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Um, I don't know if you can see that. The chair might be in the way. But it is like a really long um, turtleneck, crazy, so warm jumper. Um, so yeah, when I was knitting down the armhole, um, I had to knit so many more rows to get to the um, suggested length, like depth which meant when I picked up the stitches, instead of picking up, I can't remember, instead of picking up like three stitches for every four rows, I picked up like two stitches for every three rows, I think, which meant that, yeah. <laughs> but I managed to sort of bodge it and make it work, which, so it was all fine basically. Um, I'm really, really happy with the fabric that it's created. It's one of the lightest weights, like smallest gauge <laughs> jumpers, oversized big jumpers that I have knitted. So it took so long. I in fact, it took exactly a month to knit, but throughout that month I didn't work on it um, I w did a couple of other projects um, so I just came and went with it um, but at the end I just powered through and really got it done and um, so <laughs> I had spoken before about some petite knit patterns that I've tried to knit and I've said how her gauges wildly different 
<laughs> to mine and I don't know if that was just like like something weird but for this to what like by the end of knitting it I was complete I trusted the pattern completely it was really well written um, and I think my like, finished object came out pretty much spot on to what she written had written so if, so if I was to knit a jumper I would always change like the sleeve length or how long the ribbing is and the body length and how long that ri ribbing is for this I didn't change anything I followed the pattern which is really strange like I've never done that before <laughs> so you know I really trusted the pattern um however when I had knitted um down the jumper um and I'd finished the first because it's a split hem again I don't actually know how much you can see it but it's a split hem um and I'd knit the first like the front hem ribbing and I tried it on and I was like this is way too long um like it's not flattering or so I was thinking that I was going to I wasn't going to rip back the ribbing um, because it had taken so long <laughs> um, but I thought I'll knit the back ribbing and then I'm probably going to have to do some surgery and take out like um, a big like section <laughs> to make it shorter like the same that I did on my badger and plume sweater um, on the arm but I tried it on when I'd finished everything and I was like okay I get it <laughs> I get why it's meant to be this length and actually I really like it so thank god um, I'm not gonna have to do that surgery because um, <laughs> because it's really nerve-wracking <laughs> and um, quite easily quite easy to mess up <laughs> so um, yeah really happy with the length I will say that I have not wet Swapped this yet, um, so it might end up growing a little bit more, which I don't actually want. So I have only steam blocked this, and I actually think it's okay. Like, um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna wet block it. Um, I'm gonna wear it until it gets dirty, until it needs its first wash, and then I'll wash and wet block it. Um, what else have I written about? That is pretty much it. I would definitely, oh yeah, for the cuffs, I didn't actually have um, the right needle size um, and um, circular needle diameter, circumference. Um, so I ended up, this pattern suggests or the, yeah, the needle that I should have used was a 4mm and I ended up having to use a 3.5 and I think it draws in the, I kind of have blocked it out um, as much as I can with steam blocking the cuff cinches in too much I really wanted just a straight um, sleeve and for the ribbing not to cinch in at all but but it's fine. If I was to knit this again, I'd definitely get that. <laughs> the right needle size to wear. Um, and I'd definitely recommend this pattern. I really want to knit it again, but I'm not going to. For a while, anyway. Uh, but yeah, really enjoyed this. And I have been looking at all of her other patterns to see to see what which one <laughs> I will knit next because I'm definitely gonna knit quite a few more from her so yeah that's exciting so we will move on to my next finished object <laughs> this was again a whip in my last one and it is my hand spun socks I will get them so these are my hands 
show it on here this time so basically um you put this end through this little hole i've purposefully made the hole quite small so that um 
when you put it around like like a little ponytail and you <laughs> I don't know if you can see um, that it doesn't um, fall out so anyway yeah in my last one I was talking about how I wanted to write up a pattern and do a tutorial video I have written up the pattern um I've obviously not got it tested or anything <laughs> I've just written it up and I'm hoping to film a tutorial soon it's really so easy to make um so yeah I'm excited to make that I just obviously I've written up the pattern I just need to find a day to to film it because I'm busy like most days out of the week and then for my days that I'm not so busy it has to be like a really nice day um otherwise I don't really want to go to the hassle of filming a video and for it to be like dark and not very nice or not very easy to see what I'm doing but yeah that is coming if you're interested I can just send you the pattern <laughs> um yeah so that's them, I will send those away um, and hopefully she likes them. I'm just speeding through these. I feel like because I've showed them all before, I don't want to recap everything. Um, so if you go to my last one and you want to know a bit more, you can find out more <laughs> um, there. So yes, my, so because this has taken up so much time and also I've not had as much time recently to spend knitting I've only got one whip which I cast on last night because I finished this two days ago and I cast on that yesterday it is the birds of a feather by Andrea Maori I have knitted this once before it was like a purple gradient yarn with a purple mohair so this is as far as I've gotten it's not much to show you at all <laughs> yeah that's literally it um I mean I've started it so <laughs> yeah it's it's in its ugly you can't really tell what's going on stage but I am using, I've not got the ball bands, but I am using a mohair. This is a mohair by Ching Fiber, which I got for Christmas. It is in the colour Matrix, and it's just a kid's silk base. And the other yarn, which took me a while to find an affordable good quality yarn to pair with that I didn't want to get one that was like not a good quality because I know because that mohair is so special so basically I ended up getting Fjord Donegal by um, Ching Fiber I don't know if that's picking up <laughs> but it's like a tweedy yarn it is a single ply and it's ply um, yeah and it's not spun very tightly so it's very easily broken like you can so easily just how do i describe that you know what i mean <laughs> so this yarn is actually a heavy lace weight so per 50 grams you get um 350 meters in the pattern it calls for a yarn that is 365 meters per 100 grams so i'm holding two strands of this together which will make it stronger and it also gets me the right yarn weight so that is what i am doing i have gone up um half a needle size from what the pattern suggests the yarn is actually like when when I was winding it <laughs> I was getting my girlfriend to hold the skeins like this and I was winding it on a ball winder and we were in so much pain afterwards because 
I actually bought two collars of this yarn, which I will show you. I actually bought this yarn, this collar um, of the Fjord Donegal, um, which is Crocodile. And this one is Soot. And I really did not know which one to hold it with like <laughs> so my first um what's the word like i first decided on the green <laughs> so i had what we'd well we because she was holding it and i was winding it we'd wound up two of the green balls already and then I started knitting like just like two rows of it and I was like no no that's not the colour that I want to use so then we had to wind up the black I've still actually got one more skein to wind up but I just could not stomach doing another one because I didn't wind it once. I then, um, once I'd wound it from her holding it like this, I then rewound it again. So I caked it up, I caked all of the balls and the mohair ball, I caked them up twice. So that was like 10 cakes that I'd done at that point, and that was done. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I can I can wind that one later. I feel like that was a really long-winded explanation. <laughs> but anyway, all to say that I went with the black, and when we were, when I was winding it, I actually I could feel that I had quite a lot of lanolin in still. Um, and when I've knitted it up, it is a tiny bit stiff at this gauge, but my thinking is is that it will soften and bloom and become really drapey and nice when washed so i'm already so excited to wash this yarn and i'm a little bit nervous that the, the black will run i really do not want this like really cool neon green to get dampened down that would be such a shame so I'm kind of, I'm risking it, <laughs> I really am playing with fire there. <laughs> so yeah, um, that is going to be like my main um, focus um, and yeah, I'm, I can't really think of, I don't really want any more projects on the boat, I just want to focus on one. It's been a while since I've done that, especially with like gift knitting at Christmas. I've always had like two or three or sometimes four projects on the go and sometimes that just does not, it's not as like satisfying because <laughs> it takes so long to finish and um, if you're like constantly jumping between all of them. So yeah, I will now, oh no I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> So I've not shown these on the podcast before. Um, this is a half finished object <laughs> and it is a pair of socks. These are my travel socks. So I cast on a pair of socks um, just after summer, just before um, going back to college because last year in college we didn't actually go in I think we went in like two days <laughs> so I cast on a sock hoping to just knit them on my train journeys I didn't knit on them at all at home it was just on the train journeys and <laughs> it's taken me this long to finish one but for a couple of like weeks or days like depending on how my mental health was and how anxious I was I wouldn't knit on them but recently I've just been powering through this 
So this is my travel college sock. And this is Stylecraft and it's called Head Over Heels. You can, um, yeah, it's a really, really long colour change, which I quite like. I actually think um, I might end up getting quite a matchy matchy sock, which I think is just a fluke. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, this for this sock, I am knitting it on a teeny tiny, teeny teeny tiny, <laughs> uh, nine inch nine inch circular needle, which is super super fun. It is only my second, I think, sock knitting on a nine inch, and it is so convenient. For knitting in public because my sock needles of choice are DPMs which just they're too <laughs> like obnoxious to knit with in public because you've got like four pointy needles um <laughs> yeah and also when you knit with DPMs and um, most of the time you have one like needle that isn't actually attached to the knitting that's a bad explanation which is quite easy to drop <laughs> or lose which obviously you cannot lose this um, which is also good and you can just shove it in your bag without um, the fear of like the needles bending or snapping really so yeah I really recommend trying nine inch circulars specifically just for travel knitting and I'm hoping I'm, I'm hoping that I'll finish the second sock before I finish college in the summer I highly doubt it but if I get my head down I might um might finish them so this is a 64 stitch sock this is like the most basic of sock recipes that i've used for this so that i am not thinking at all um so usually i would sort of chop and change or decrease and increase stitch um how many stitches i have to shape like to ankle and then the heel and the foot and all that but I didn't it's just a 64 stitch foot and leg and everything um just to make it easy for myself on a 2.5 millimeter needle so yeah that is that nothing to say about that um but yeah really happy with that so I'll move on to acquisitions now which is teeny tiny <laughs> um I actually got these I'm pretty sure I've not showed them on the podcast I'm pretty sure but um I literally got like these arrived like maybe one or two days after I filmed my last <laughs> podcast um so so I actually placed an order with Ching Fiber to get these um, and with that order I also got, got one more skein <laughs> Sorry for the rustling but this is the Fjord um, just Fjord, not Fjord Donegal so this is a bit different It's Oh, I forgot to say that this is an 80% lamb's wool and a 20% nylon. Um, this is the same, but it is, I think it's actually just a two-ply. Yeah, it's just a two-ply, but it is, you get 100 grams in this and the yardage is 466 meters. Per 100 grams which is a light fingering. I got these because I just really wanted to try the base 
and it's actually quite affordable. It's £7.50 a bowl or a skein, which means that I could actually feasibly buy a sweater's quantity of this and maybe hold it together with like a drops kid silk. I was actually thinking of making a novice cardigan by Petite Knit um, using this and mohair. So I think I might have to do that. <laughs> but anyway, I've got these just to try out the yarn and I'm going to knit socks with them. Even though it doesn't look like a strong yarn. But anyway, it's ethically sourced. Um, and sustainably produced in China, which is another reason why I wanted to get it. Um, and it's really soft, I really like it. And I'm going to have to run over there to get my next acquisition. <laughs> so. <laughs> so all of this is fibre by John Arben Textiles. My Exmoor sock is John Arben. I also got two more ball um, tops from John Arben for my Christmas. And then I just had to, <laughs> to get more, basically. I don't know. So the first one that I got is this one. This is 200 grams of absorbable and Exmoor blue face mix. I'm pretty sure it's 50 50 absorbables and Exmoor blue face. Um, it really, <laughs> that took me back there. It really, really smells like, um, like it's a really strong smelling of sheep. I don't mind, I actually quite like that, but. That was strong. <laughs> so anyway, that's really, really soft. I actually got that to make more socks with. <laughs> I actually got all of these thinking socks. Like, <laughs> I'm sure I won't use all of it for socks, but socks was just on my mind and it was just so satisfying spinning up a quantity that's just enough for socks. I feel like spinning a jumper quantity is a little bit out of my um, skills because you have to be so consistent with the weight that you spin which I'm not really there at all <laughs> so I feel like I'd waste a lot of fibre if I had just jumped in oh my god I keep wanting to yawn <laughs> so my next one is Yana Dillick, which is 100% Falklands Corriedale in black gold of the sun. When I saw, it was so hard to choose all the colours, of course, <laughs> but when I saw this one, I was just too intrigued um, um, to see like what the finished yarn would look like. I feel like it's going to be just a brown with really interesting um, tones in it. Um, so yeah, this one smells less like sheep, but this one is really, really soft. I'm not sure what, how spinning changes the softness of fibre um, if when I spin it, fibres will sort of pop out and it might be a bit itchy but but when it's like this it's so soft so the last one that I got is this one again this is a different base <laughs> it's the Devonia Devonia, which is 50% Exmoor blue face, 30% blue face luster and 20% Wensleydale and it's pollen gold. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought I was going to go on the, on the floor. <sighs> Calm. 
So they, <laughs> yeah, again, when I saw this on, on the website, um, I didn't know what the finished um, fibre would look like spun up, so I, I was just too curious and I just had to get it. Also, I don't, I don't have any yellow socks and this has been like ongoing. I've always wanted yellow socks but I've just not got any so finally I'm gonna have some yellow socks. I think this one is definitely gonna be soft. This one is also extremely soft. All of them are really soft. I really hope that doesn't get lost um, when I spin them up. I, again, I don't really know what the deal is there. <laughs> anyway, so that is everything. I don't know how long I've spoken for, but yes. Um, so thank you for watching. Again, if you've gotten this far, thank you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I will see you next time, hopefully, with lots to show, maybe some spinning. Um, probably some more cast-ons because I just can't help myself and hopefully that birds of a feather will be close to finished because I'm very committed to finishing that I'm really excited to knit that it is such a fun knit so yeah thank you again for watching I hope you are doing well I know if you're not I hope things start looking up for you and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.